May God bless you. Welcome to our weekly message. Let's pray. Dear Father, we just thank you for all that you've done for us. We ask you, Lord, for a message that would touch every soul that hears it. We pray, Father, that it will be your words and no one else's, and that it will go forth for your glory. In the holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let us go to Isaiah chapter 14, verse number 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? We live in an age when there's an all-out offensive going on for the souls of whoever can be claimed, for whoever's soul that can be deceived, whoever's soul can be robbed. So many blessings that are there, that our Lord provides. He's always done it. He's always had so much for so many. We live in an age when that devil would like nothing more than to see all those blessings, all those things destroyed. He comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's what he comes for. As a roaring lion, it's a roaring lion, waiting for that moment when he can jump out devour whom he may devour. But you and I, knowing this, knowing that the Bible is true, knowing that it tells us all that it tells us, knowing that it's not as Satan and his movements and all that in this world are, knowing that it's not some ancient outdated text that has no relevance today, knowing that instead this book right here has the power that it's always had, that it always will have, that this book right here is the book that has all the truth that we need. This is our roadmap to heaven. This is our key. Our key to unlocking so many of the things. Knowing this, let us not believe this lie that it's some outdated text, that it has no place, that all religions basically lead to the same thing. No, they don't. No, they don't. Christianity, you can call it elitist or whatever you want to call it. It is Christ. It is Christ and His sacrifice on a cross. Buddha and all these other guys, none of them died on a cross for your sins or mine. None of them came and were tempted in all points, even as we are, and overcame it perfectly, sinlessly, as our Jesus did. And the devil in his movement... It's to make all of this as if it's the lie, as if it's the, the fairy tale. When truly the fairy tale is whatever mess he tries to sell us. And that's all these other religions that lead to nowhere. All these other philosophies of man that push Christ out and lead to absolutely nothing. All these other empty empty roads, for that's all they are. And roads that as you walk down them and you journey down those roads, that there's only a fiery lake at the end of them. He paints you some beautiful pictures. He tells you that science and technology have far surpassed anything our Lord has told us or given us. And you read Job, you read where God is talking to Job and you see so many of the things way back when that the Lord stated. Things that those that believed in Him knew way back then. For science has had trouble catching up with the Bible in so many different areas. And it always will because the Bible will always be ahead because the Bible is the truth. Our holy Bible is the truth. And that devil will lie to you all he wants to lie. But it's up to you to say no. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father but by him. He died on the cross for me. He gave me all that he gave me. He was the walking, talking, breathing word of God in human form. Walking this earth. Showing us just how that word looks when a person takes that word and fully, fully, fully applies it. 
It's Christ. Our Savior, our Lord, the King of Kings. Then you've got our adversary. Who might come as an angel of light? Who might try to tell you, oh, look at the miracles of science and healthcare that I've come with. Look at the miracles that have happened in this world. Look at mankind, humanism. We're about to put people on Mars. We're about to do this. We're about to do that. They're about to do only as much as our God allows. And any advances that are good and profitable in whatever way, any good thing, period, that has ever come, our God is the reason that it came along. God's the one that created all this stuff. The devil just came to pervert it and mess it up in any way he could do it. It's like you make the perfect sandwich. Somebody comes and throws some off the wall sauce on it and it just don't taste right anymore. That's what the devil came to do. To destroy all that he could destroy. To take whatever beautiful picture he could take that the Lord had painted and mess it up. And I tell you, in this hour, let us look at what the Word of God says about the devil and his end. Because he tries to tell us all these things about God in whatsoever form. Be it the media, be it television, be it the internet, be it all those places where all these false things are coming to pass and all these lies, deceptions are being taught and being spread. All these theories and all this mess to take the Word of God and either contradict it or try to rule it out. But let's see what the true Word what it says about the devil. That verse 12, let us go back. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. He tried to ascend higher. Like he was going to be something far more than he was ever created to be. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners. All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the raiment of those that are slain thrust through with a sword, they go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden under feet. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. How much worse will the one that is the author of evil the one that created all the mess, that brought all the deception, the, the wickedness, the crazy stuff that's going on in this world, the one that's behind it all. How much worse will he fare in the end? They'll narrowly look upon him and say, is this the one that made the, the kingdoms to shake? Or that made the earth to tremble? That did shake kingdoms? That made the world as a wilderness? Destroyed the cities thereof? Is this the one? His glory that he seeks after in trying to undermine our God and trying to attack our God and trying to bring out this full assault that he's bringing about against us and against our Father in this hour. All that he's trying to do, it plays out exactly as God's word tells us it plays out. His kingdom will come, all right. His kingdom will sure come. It'll be in a lake of fire. He'll do everybody wrong that ever tries to do anything with him. That's the destiny 
of all these that call themselves devil worshipers or whatever. What a sad, sad people when they find out that what they've worshipped, that what they've sought after is nothing like they thought it would be. For there's no dealing with the devil. There's no prosperity coming with him. Oh, you might get a season of pleasure or whatever. But how quickly does that season die? How quickly does that season end? And then the judgment. I love it where it says Moses chose to suffer affliction with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. The pleasures of sin, as sweet as they seem to this flesh, in this world, as comforting as they seem to be in this world. I'm reminded of the rich man who opened his eyes in hell. And I know I speak a lot of him because people need to hear it in this day. They need to hear there is a real place called hell. It's not some literary thing or not some play on words and all the mess that the lies are trying to teach them. For if the devil can get you to believe that a burning hell does not exist, he's won half the battle. I love you enough to tell you the truth. It does exist. And its borders are broadened every day, as Isaiah 5 tells us. Isaiah 5 and 14. Let's look at that right quick. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp and he that rejoiceth, rejoiceth shall descend into it. And the mean man shall be brought down and the mighty man shall be humbled and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment and God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. Our God will always come out on top. What better reason than for you and me? What better reason for us to follow after Him? What better reason to trust in Him? For we know the enemy and his lies and we know how it plays out. He will deceive. He will continue to deceive. He'll deceive those that He deceives. And their end will be just like we read about in the Word of God. Right there in Isaiah 14. It's all that waits down the road for evil, for those that partake in evil, for those that follow after evil, for all those that go that way. That's all that waits down there. It's a burning lake of fire. But Jesus said, I came that you would have life and life more abundantly. Jesus in his weakest of hours. For I was picturing this today as I was working. I was thinking about this. I was thinking first about Daniel and that lion's den. You know, they really thought they had Daniel when they cast him into that lion's den. And God shut the mouths of those lions and God delivered Daniel. And then I got to thinking about Christ. They really thought they had Jesus, I believe. I believe in hell. They really thought that victory was about to be won. How they get those people yelling out, crucify him. Free Barabbas. Not Jesus. Free the, free the, the bad guy. Not this innocent person. They get Pilate to say, I wash my hands of this. When you can't wash your hands of the blood of Christ, but he's washing his hands. There's Christ on a cross. And our Lord and Savior, up there in his weakest, up there in a state that there's Peter denying him. I believe a lot of it out of fear because he thinks that, I don't know what he thought, but I think there was some doubt in his mind seeing that this man that had, that had given sight to the blind and raised the dead and done all those things, seeing that they had put him on a cross. And it looked bleak and it looked hopeless in that hour. It looked awful. They come and they apprehend him and he won't even let them fight for him. And there's Peter. It doesn't make it right that he denied Christ. 
But I'm nobody to judge him because it didn't look good either in that hour. This flesh is weak. The spirit is, is willing, but the flesh is weak. And his flesh was weak in that hour. And there he is denying Jesus. Not certain what's going to happen. And there's Christ in his weakest, weakest hour. On that cross. And yet, he says, it is finished. He wins the victory in his weakest, weakest point. He does. And that devil in all his might, in all his glory, in all his hardest fighting hour can never match my Lord and Savior as he hung on a cross. Moments from his own death. He was stronger in his own death than the devil and all his all his existence has ever been Christ won the victory Christ won the victory for you and for me if we'll follow after in hell they must have thought we got him we've done this and yet it was finished and the victory was won over sin and over death. Right there. Be not deceived, brothers and sisters. Be not deceived by the enemy or any of his tricks, any of his lies, any of his false religions, any of his false anything. Don't let him tell you this is a fairy tale because this is the ultimate truth. But I'm going to tell you, there is a liar. His name is Satan. Lucifer, son of the morning, all the different names that he goes by. He would like nothing more than to steal you, to steal your soul, to steal your attention, to distract you from God and all God's truth, to get you out there in left field somewhere vulnerable, to have you lost. For he'll steal your attention, he'll steal you long enough that he'll steal your soul. And he'll kill your body, and he'll destroy you for all eternity if you follow down his road. Yet Jesus said, I come to give you life, and life more abundantly. I'm the good shepherd that lays down his life for the sheep. And even in that shepherd's weakest time, he was stronger than all of hell, all of Satan's kingdom, all of Satan's armies, anything he could throw at the Lord. Jesus was stronger in that weakest hour. In flesh and blood, just like you and me, he was stronger in that hour. Because he won the victory. You tonight, if you don't know him, if you haven't asked him to be your Lord and Savior, if you haven't come his way, if you've been entertaining all the mess that the devil's trying to put out, for he is trying to put so much out in this hour, he is on that full out assault, he is, trying to claim as many as he can, for misery loves company, and he'd love nothing more than to see you burning with him. But if you don't want to go that way, if you don't want your life to be a deception if you don't want to be taken down that road any further if you're ready today to say no I want to go with Jesus you might have walked with Jesus at some point in your life and you might have said no I'm going this way if you're ready to come back to him no matter what you've done no matter where you are for he loves you he loved you enough to spill his precious blood for you Pilate said, I wash my hands of this man's blood. That blood you can't wash off. The blood of Jesus will either make you clean as it can make you, or it will make you as filthy as ever with the sin of having it on your hands. I tell you, this day, this day you can come to him. You don't have to walk down the enemy's road any longer. You don't have to walk down that path of deception, that path of sin, that path of depression, that path of hurt, 
For there's nothing down there but confusion, loss, hurt, destruction, death. All those things lay down that road. And you've got a Lord and Savior that was honest about everything. He told you how it would be from the beginning. You can see it coming to pass as you read His Word. Won't you give Him your life today? Won't you come to Him today? May not ever be another opportunity. This might be your last day. I don't try to scare you. I just love you. And I don't want to see you lost. I don't want to see you deceived. I want to see you have the good things. And not the bad things that we read about in Isaiah 14. That are coming for the devil. And all that follow after him. For there's nothing down that road. But if you'll follow Jesus. There's only good things waiting. Yeah it might be a hard walk in this world. It's a straight and narrow road and all that. But where it leads so much better than anything you could ever imagine. And I reckon, as it says in Romans 8, that the sufferings of this world cannot be compared to the glory that's to come. And I promise you that, brother or sister, whoever you are out there, I promise you, you can't go wrong with Christ. Why don't you give your life to Him today? If you've not, pray this prayer with me and sign up for His army. Pray, dear Lord, I'm a sinner and I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Lord, I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Please come into my life, Lord, and take over in all ways. I want to go with you. I want to be part of your kingdom. I want to follow after you. Let my life be lived for you from here on out, Father. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, there's no better decision you can make than to follow Jesus. Get into your Bible. Find out more and more of who he is and all the wonderful things. John's a great book to read. James, Matthew, I like all the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but it's all good stuff. Find you a good Bible believing church. If you can't find one, you can always come. You can come be with us either way. We always update a message each Saturday on our 5 Minutes with God video page on our YouTube channel. Come be with us, come watch, come grow with us. We do a 5 Minutes with God video daily. Feel free to come watch that every day. and Pray with us, grow, seek with us. But get closer to Him every day. And if you have any questions or anything, anything I can help you with, my name is Travis Williams. I'll be glad to pray with you. And most importantly, if you've never been baptized, get baptized also. And if you can't find a place to do that, we'll be glad to try to find you somewhere with different churches and stuff. But let us, let us get closer to him in every way. Let us seek after him. For we know how the enemy plays out. We know how his kingdom plays out. Let's go with the one who came to give us life and life more abundantly. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for this message. We pray for so many that are watching, Lord, that they might decide to follow you. So many that might be on the brink of the de deception, Lord, that they would come after you, Father. Leave all that behind, Lord. Give us a hunger for your word in these days, Lord, and a, just to seek it in our hearts, Lord, to where we want to know more of you, know more about you in every way, Lord. Just convict our hearts and help us, Lord, to make our lives the way you'd have them to be more and more, Father. Help us to overcome, Lord, so that we might be ready on that day. In Jesus' holy name, Father, we pray. Amen. May God bless you.